What's up guys and welcome to Let's Play Demon Souls. I'm Dave Klein of Dave Control and let's jump into this. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and do a new game, logging into Demon Souls. We're going to do offline just because uh, I think that helps with world, te world tendency, at least the way it worked as I understand from the PlayStation 3 version. Still not sure how the PlayStation 5 version is, to be honest. Uh, this will be, of course, the return the return of Kita for Kita Edition. Uh, we're going to do Knight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do, just to save time, we'll retrieve a uh, look that I made earlier for my lore character. And let's go with some fire bombs for fun. And uh, for those of you who are new to my Let's Plays, the way that I do it is that I tend to be quiet during the lore and cutscenes, so then we can talk about the lore and cutscenes. And I talk throughout otherwise. So I will hop into the intro cutscene and be quiet for a moment. King Alant the Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. That is, until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria was cut off from the outside world, and those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. But Valifax of the royal twin fangs broke free from the fog and told the world of Boletaria's plight. That the old King Alant had roused the old one, the great beast below the Nexus, from its eternal slumber, and that a colorless fog had swept in, unleashing terrible demons. The demons hunt down men and claim their souls. Those who lose their souls lose also their minds. The mad attack the sane, and chaos reigns. Valifax also spoke of the enticing power of the demon souls. Each time a demon claims a human soul, the demon's own soul is invigorated by the life force. And the power of a mature demon soul is beyond human imagination. The legend spread quickly. Mighty warriors lured by the possibilities braved the fissure to breach the accursed land. But none have returned. Pure of the Twin Fangs. Yet the Silent Chief. Saint Urbane. Skurva the Wanderer. The Sixth Saint Astria with her Knight Gal Vinland. And Sage Freak the Visionary. The colorless deep fog slowly creeps beyond Boletaria's borders. Humankind faces a slow and steady extinction. The deep fog will eventually swallow all lands near and far. But Boletaria has one final hope. A lone warrior who has braved the baneful fog. Oh, has the land found its savior? Or have the demons found a new slave? That is a good question. But let's talk about it after we go uh, to the tutorial area. Brave soul who fears not death. I shall guide you to the fissure. So that you may lull the old one back to slumber. Alright, so there's something interesting to think about right off the bat. As I unequip stuff so I can roll faster is that the voice that we heard was the voice of the Monumental, who we'll meet later. And the Monumentals are essentially why people are in the Nexus in the first place and trapped there. 
Uh, and then Monumental is the one who is lulling us into the Fisher to come to the Nexus. Um, take that as you will. Uh, and we'll talk about it more later. Uh, other thing is that in true RPG fashion, as Miyazaki loves to do, uh, you can kind of make up your own decision for why your character has come here. Are you trying to gain power from the Demon Souls? Or are you trying to be the savior of mankind? Uh, which, which are you? And that's going to be your character's choice. There we go. That's the thrust attack. Um, so you can decide that. Other stuff is the fog, which is really important. You see the area is pretty misty here. Um, and by the way, that, that ghost is just basically teaching you what things are and is showing you where to go. But as this is the tutorial area, but the, uh, basically for the PlayStation three, which is what Demon's Souls initially came out on, they had limitations of hardware. And as you can see all the fog here, that's a really good way to work with the limitations of the hardware is that you only had a certain draw distance that you could do, uh, real quick something in Demon Souls that's not in the other Souls games, you can leap over stuff like that every so often, which they eventually took out. But yeah, so you had limited draw range. And making something misty and making it really foggy so you can't see as far works well into that fog draw range, so it makes it more natural. And they just did a good job of working it into the lore, so props to them of making an interesting lore with it. Also, the fog gates that you might be really familiar with from Dark Souls, if you played Dark Souls 1, 2, or 3. Um, the fog gates that, we're all, that we all know well. That comes from Demon's Souls, but actually had a real lore reason from Demon's Souls, as you may have now noticed, where the fog is creeping in. And, um, you know, this colorless fog that's causing the extinction of mankind. It's from the old one, who's this Lovecraftian-esque being. So you can't even really comprehend because it's so horrifying and it's the end of the world type of creature. And um, that's why these fog gates exist and also why, again, the fog with the draw distance and all that. All lore reasons. So pretty cool stuff there. Uh, I love how they incorporated all that element of gameplay into the story. I'm a big fan of that and how they did that with Demon's Souls. So... Uh, a lot of the elements from Dark Souls, some of them make sense within the lore, a lot of the gameplay elements, but really, they came from Demon Souls and make more sense within Demon Souls, so, as that's where it came from. Uh, here, you're supposed to learn how, to, not necessarily against these guys, but the next guy's pairing is going to be really important for these guys specifically. Oh shit, but I'm not the best at parrying in Demon Souls. There we go. Although I'm happy I'm at least pulling off some of them. But for these these knights specifically, you'll really want to be able to parry. I'm going to take this off of my item. Oh, something also to Demon Souls is... So you have an equip burden, as you can see on the top right. And I have 17 out of 40, and then 42.5%. As long as you are under 50%, you will get your fast roll with more iframes to dodge. Another thing in Demon Souls that they took out for Dark Souls and the rest of the series in Bloodborne is an item burden, and you don't want that to go over 90. Something that they changed up for the PlayStation 5 version, though, is that you can actually send some of those items to... Shit. Haha! <laughs> I got lucky there, honestly. You can send some of those items to Stockpile Thomas, uh, which we can't do yet, who's a character in the Nexus that we'll meet. You can now send those mid-level to them, but you couldn't in the original PlayStation 3 game, so you really had to worry about what items you were holding and how many items and what you picked up and all that and drop items uh, and, like, what you took with you because, like, maybe you'd find a rare item that you wanted to keep and, like, oh, no, but I took some good items with me and I don't want to drop them. Gone from this. Uh, I mean, like, it's still sort of there, the mechanic, but it's, you know, much weaker. So, personally, I am glad because I like all, getting all the things, and I'm a huge collector. But it does take out that element of um, trying to figure out what you're going to bring with you and all that. So I can see why some people would dislike that change. Since it essentially makes the game a little bit easier. Oh, man. Oh, man. You and your staircase protecting you. Lucky you. 
Ha, I saw you reloading. All right, time to settle a long debate. So, in the original Demon Souls, the graphics were not as good. Although some people will argue with you that stylistically and aesthetically it looked more interesting than just this photo realism. Regardless, there's this blood on the ground here and a pot boiling a liquid. In the original Demon Souls, it, people weren't sure if it was oil that was boiling. They weren't sure if it was blood that was boiling to feed the upcoming Vanguard as you see potentially bodies being dragged up here, which is the Vanguard demon boss. Or maybe it was just water or something else. Well, I will use the brand new photo mode to once and for all settle this debate. It is oil boiling, now a rat stew with the rats inside, rat bodies, rat legs, and all that. Mmm, yum, looks delicious. So that is maybe i don't know like it's so this is a, a remaster by blue point so you can decide for yourself if you believe this or you don't think that they got it right i don't know um i would i like to think that from software for stuff like that told them what the asset was supposed to be so they could remake it properly i like to think that but i guess you could always argue otherwise all right so we are coming up to our first boss here Unlike Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, etc., you don't have to beat this boss. If you lose to the boss, you just won't get some bonus items, and that is perfectly okay. However, the incentive for beating the Vanguard Demon right here, my boy right here, I, I just love this photo mode, uh, is that beat him, and you will get some extra goodies. Also, I just want to show off this with the photo mode, because I find it hilarious. So, okay, you can show your helmet on or off, and I can get why people would like that option. You can change your pose if you want. Uh, but the best of all is the expressions. Anger. <laughs> Afraid. Happy. <laughs> Laugh. It's so terrifying. It's something I didn't realize at first, but I did eventually. So if you press down, you can change the intensity of these expressions so i can be slightly laughing slightly happy but just all the way up these are so hilarious looking the side eye all of it all right let's go ahead and fight the this vanguard demon gotta roll through it yo gotta roll through all right so best thing about him is that his butt cheeks now flap uh might have to make a new butt porn video come up with a name for it for demon souls about the butt borniness of this um but yeah so he can he can pretty much one shot you with that axe strike so that's why i'm i'm healing up basically every time i get hurt a little bit because then i have a slight chance if he hits me with the axe to survive um but yeah you can play it safe just try to stay behind him uh if you really want to play it safe just go for one strike when you feel comfortable but, um, yeah, basically you'll want to roll with his axe. Or, sorry, I should say not with, against his axe. So whatever direction you see the axe when he starts to swing, usually you want to go towards where his axe is. I just happened to already be on the other side there, so that's why I didn't. But usually I'll go with his axe. Like, or I should say, sorry, against his axe. Like, there I was on the same side as his axe. And, yeah, the other thing he has is this pound. Really not at all a difficult boss, other than the fact that he can one-shot you pretty easy, so... Um, I die to him sometimes for that one-shot reason. And again, him stomping on you like he just did to me. Like, that's an easy way for him to knock out some health, and then if he hits you right afterwards, that's very potentially a death. Definitely happened to me. But we gotta get that booty right now. Yo, we gotta get that... We gotta make that ass quake. <laughs> Got to get that wop that he's got going on. Personally, I'm a fan of making the booty shake. Because he is so thick. I think that's probably the best added element to the remake, to be honest. It's just that. Oh, God. I don't want to get away from him because his swing is wild long if you're on the other side. 
So definitely stay close to him. Other than when he does his uh, fly attack. But you have so much time to react to the flying up attack. It's not really a big deal. Should have probably kept a roll just in case, but that's okay. I just don't want to lose to him because that's embarrassing to me. I mean, it happens. I, I, I die to him actually a sad amount of time. It's not, like, uncommon for me to die to him. Like, you can see, like, me getting away from him and rolling in was actually pretty... If I hadn't timed that roll right, he probably would have gotten me. I just happened to time it correctly. Yeah, actually, you know, the thing is, I actually got the uh, firebombs for this, for him. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. No! <laughs> oh, God! Oh, man. I regret the firebombs immediately. All right, there we go. Vanguard Demon, you are done! That is our first demons. Demon slain. Demon soul. So, uh, the idea, though, is that the demons have this limitless power, this amazing power. So a lot of warriors are going to try to get their power. So that's why it's like, oh, are you just going to try to get their power and potentially become a demon yourself? Or are you trying to be good and save the world? Uh, and again, you can really decide for yourself, and maybe it's a little bit of both. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So, here we go at the Unknown Egress. I don't know if I pronounced that properly. And this is your reward for beating the Vanguard Demon, as we get to take a look at the Dragon God, who... A lot of people don't like the fight against the Dragon God because it's very Bed of Chaos 1.0, as this was the original Bed of Chaos. Although I don't think it's as annoying as the Bed of Chaos, personally. Um, but it's the same sort of fight as the Bed of Chaos. But, oh my god, the dragon design is so good. Uh, I just, I love the extra set of teeth on the inside of him. That when he roars, you can see those inner teeth shaking, whereas the outer teeth don't. It's just such a sick design. Uh, definitely my favorite part, for sure, of uh, his design. Hopefully I didn't miss anything, but so we get a bunch of grasses, which is nice. We get some souls, which is nice. But I think one of the best rewards really is that we get some Hearthstone shards and just shards in general, Sharpstone shards, etc. Depending on what build you want to do, and there you can see some souls. So that's that's nice this is for starting out getting those. Something I don't remember and I have to look at, but I found interesting is um, this statue right there. And I don't remember who that statue is of. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a Lant or which which character that statue is. But I'm sorry I didn't look it up beforehand. I, I just noticed it while I was recording lore footage a little bit earlier. And then I had to run off to dinner and then I just started recording this right away. But um, I find this interesting because we are essentially in the Stone Fang right now. Not Boletaria. Specifically Northern. Not Northern Boletaria. Um, but... Yeah, like I said, I just I find that interesting. It could be the one who's the stone thing, the guy in the front of that arch stone, but I just don't remember. All right, so let's le take a look at our dragon with his shaky teeth because it is so cool. The dragon god. Do that roar. I want to see that roar and those sweet teeth. Oh, yeah. Inner teeth shaking. It's great. All right, you don't make it very far, though, before there's an immediate cutscene. And it's so brutal with your helmet off, seeing your face rub against the gravel and blood spurting out. Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> However, the Nexus traps you. So, again, consider... Soul of the Lost withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. Soul of the Lost, withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. is the Nexus. It holds together the northern land of Boletaria. Thou canst 
must not quit the Nexus, but the five archstones will guide thee to the outer lands. You've died and the Nexus has imprisoned your soul. You cannot escape the Nexus. And that was the Maiden of Black who was reviving us and talking to us. However, by capturing demon souls, you can reclaim your corporeal, corporeal, ah, corporeal body. Something you may notice if you look at the top left, and we just got Nexus binding there, we have half of our health. So if you're in soul form, which is what we're in right now, you have half health. Big, big, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, encumbrance. It's not the word I'm looking for, but I'll go with it. If you are, if you're not in human form. Human form, however, if you're in human form, um, if you die, that will change your world, world tendency and make it darker. So you can become human again, and that will give you full health. But if you die, you go right back to uh, your corporeal form, and you're back to half health. So it's it's kind of like humanity in Dark Souls 1, but which with a way, way harsher penalty. All right, so I don't know if it really looked like a Lance Archstone. So this is the Boletaria Archstone. Here is the Stone Fang Archstone. The Digger King. I'm just seeing if that looked like anyone. Uh, Latria, the Tower King, Queen, which is really cool. Great area. Uh, the Giants, which are not in this game. They were cut. That's if you played Dark Souls 1 and the painting of Ariamis. Essentially, that's the area that was the basis. Originally, that was going to be um, what the Giants area was going to be like, and they turned it into the Painter world. Uh, we've got our Shadow Men, which is... Uh, I can't remember the name of the area. I'm sorry. And then our Plague Knight-looking dude, the Chieftain for uh, the Valley of Defilement, which is basically just hell. Uh, all right, so... What I was talking about with the beginning of the game, as we look at these cool statues in the Nexus, is the monumental, if you think about it, drew us into the fissure, right? The monumental is one that has to come into the fissure for the demon souls. But you can look at it in a way as potentially being almost a trap in a sense, right? Because after we beat the vanguard demon who was there, the next area that we were laid to go to was just the Dragon God punching us into oblivion immediately. Uh, so it was almost like you could, like a sucker punch, right? So that's one way you could look at it. Um, I'm still trying to dig into the lore and figure out exactly where my thoughts lie in all this, uh, which is why this is the first video in the series, and I will be laying it out, and I want to see what you guys think too. Let me know in the comments. Uh, but once I like, I'm, I'm writing everything out. Once I make my lore videos, that's where I'll, I'll really figure out where I come down on, on a lot of this stuff. But anyways, interesting, interesting stuff to think about. Um, cause the monumental is going to come off cross as the good guy trying to save the world, but this is an alternate way to look at it. Or maybe you are in a sense being lied to. And I wouldn't put that past from software cause they do that a lot. A lot of the item descriptions in Demon Souls don't really tell you very much. It's not Dark Souls. They started that with Dark Souls 1. It's not Sekudo, like Crescent Moon Grass, a medicinal herb named after the lunar phase, consumed to recover a small amount of HP. This is going to be pretty much what all this stuff is. Noble's Lotus, the petal of a crimson flower that floats on water. You can see most of it's pretty uninteresting. Even the Great Demon Soul, which we got from the Vanguard. The Soul of the Vanguard Demon, a source of great power. Over and over again, that's what we're going to be seeing. But... The Nexial Binding is interesting, so let's look at that. The mark of those imprisoned by the Nexus. The bearer of this seal is bound to the Nexus, never to be free, even in death. When the body is lost, the soul remains trapped. Nexial Binding returns the servant to the Nexus, but alas, without any souls collected. Um, yeah. Augite's souls is also interesting. An iridescent soul stone fueled by souls changes color depending on the nature of nearby souls. Crafted by Gary, known for his magic handicrafts, and close acquaintance with Sage Frake the Visionary. Widely carried by travelers who depend on his ease of use and lightweight. And this is actually a lore reason why, right now. If you notice, there's a little glow coming from your character that emanates light. And in the game, that's good just for being able to see what's going on. But here is a lore reason for that. Uh, it's this item that you're carrying. But again, just to show you guys that there's not really much lore in the items, the fluted helmet, 
An iron helm with finely cut grooves, worn by knights in the relatively advanced region to Boletaria South. That's it. That's what all of these are. Something about the Boletaria South. Um, when you think of Boletaria, and when you go through this first arch stone eventually, that is actually the northern region of Boletaria. So Boletaria South is going to be a different area. Now, before I continue with this Let's Play, um, just because of time-wise and what I have to do tonight, um, I'm going to do go ahead and talk to all the characters and get lore from them, and then that's going to wrap me up for the Let's Play. And then next episode, I'm going to do 1-1, and the episode after that, I'll probably do 2-1 or 1-2 or something like that. But uh, I just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know, so if you don't want to hear lore stuff, catch me in the next episode where I will be tackling 1-1 right away. Um, another thing that I want to say before I get into this, if you're watching this Let's Play, I'm going to be probably be posting this episode to both my main channel, Dave Control, and my Let's Play channel, Dave Control Play. I am planning on posting the rest of the series on my Let's Play channel, Dave Control Play. So if you want to watch the rest of the series, it's going to be posted there, as I'm trying to keep my main channel now, specifically the videos that take me at least like 20 to 40 hours to make minimum like my super shows on the that channel take me like one to 200 hours per video if i do like a chronicles of gaming video that's again like 200 plus hours per episode who made all those those and like anything lore videos 20 hours 40 hours i don't know 20 hours usually i think for lore but um if it takes me if i put effort into it that's gonna go on the main channel let's plays are fun i like doing them but since I can just mass release them and I consider them a different sort of content, they're now in Dave Control Play. Okay, that said, let's talk to the our Crestfallen Bro, same voice actor as the Crestfallen Warrior from uh, Dark Souls 1, who I think actually looks a little bit different in Demon Souls, um, as we can take a look here. So, I don't think he looked this way, if I remember correctly. And I don't think uh, Stockpile Thomas over there looked that way either i think they look different well you slipped through the fissure too did you you came for demon souls or to save this land and be remembered as a hero <laughs> hunting for demons try one of the arch stones now go that is why you came is it not to this accursed Boletaria. Yeah, so obviously he's a little crestfallen about what's going on. You came for demon souls. Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero. But it's all the same. You're just another prisoner of the Nexus. Uh, oh. We're welcome here. As long as we keep slashing up demons. <laughs> All right, something I want to add while I talk to these guys. I I turned it off for Lord stuff, but um, oh yeah, I gotta turn on my HUD for Lord stuff too. Anyways, I'm gonna turn the uh, the subtitles back on. You came for demon silver. It's so prison. He's saying that we're prisoners of the Nexus. We we're welcome here as long as we keep slashing up demons. <laughs> So, that you're not really going to hear that point of view from other characters, but again, with the idea I was saying before, where maybe you're almost tricked in a way of coming here by the monumental, and then him, and then you know you get that Nexial binding once you end up here, which uh, the bearer of the seal is bound to the Nexus, never to be free, even in death, the mark of those imprisoned by the Nexus, and then he's saying like, hey, we're prisoners here. As long as we keep on killing demons. Definitely one way to look at what's going on here. Or maybe, you know, it's like a mix, you know. If you look at the Monumental as a hero, you could say that maybe he's doing what he has to do. But, uh, yeah, a way to look at it for sure. All right, let's talk to Stockpile Thomas, who now has a sweet mustache. Look at that stash. Look at, oh, okay. I'm in my own way. Off. Oh. Oh, I, I, I'm still in the way. Whatever. Oh, yeah, you can see how much light emanates from the character, too, when you turn him off and on. Right? All right, anyways, let's talk to Thomas. I'm Stockpile Thomas. 
When the scourge came, I didn't know what hit me. When I came to, I found myself here in this nexus. My wife and daughter fell victim to the demons. But I would be worthless in battle. At the very least, I hope to lend my assistance to you brave slayers of demons. I would be happy to lighten your load and look after any excess baggage. So, Stockpile Thomas, you just ran away. You just ran and ended up here, huh? That's all there is to it? When the scourge came, I abandoned my wife and daughter and fled like a coward. When I came to, I was in this nexus. I haven't dared venture outside these walls since. I wish I could do more, but <laughs> I am ignorant of the world beyond these walls. So now he's being a little more honest with us here, that he was actually being a coward and doesn't really know what happened to his wife and child, is presuming them dead, but uh, yeah, he just fleed. My candle maiden cared for me during my first days here. She says very little, but has a kind heart. She's just the age my young daughter would have been. Hmm. Poor, poor girl. Trapped here with her eyes occluded by wax. If only something could be done to help her. I'm sure she is exactly the age of your young daughter. I'm sure. Exact same age. Totally. If only something could be done to help her. Alright, so that's what he's got to say. Um, we'll come back to him with more stuff later. But uh, I purchased the... I purchased a physical copy of Demon's Souls because I like having physical copies of games. Annoyingly... Demon Souls, you had to pre-order a digital deluxe copy if you wanted the exclusive items. So I also did that. So I literally purchased a stupid digital copy of Demon Souls that cost 90 bucks, and bought a $70 physical copy on top of that. Great. Just because I like collecting physical copies, I like having them. It makes me... I like feeling like I own the game as opposed to them just borrowing the game, which is how they always try to phrase it for games now is that you're borrowing them. Anyways, I did that specifically in case there are any items interesting for the lore, for my lore videos, or so I could dress up as the characters if I need to for stuff. There's nothing interesting for the lore in terms of item descriptions, but let's look at what I got. So, uh, if we go into our box, we got some souls that I can use. That's nice, just like for leveling up. Uh, I guess you could say that's like paying the win, but um, whatever. Uh, preservation grains. Ground blend of herbs and jelly with a slightly sweet smell. Uh, additional resistance to status ailments temporarily. Uh, the phosphorus phosphorescent grains. Uh, grants additional resistance from magic temporarily. The bear bug grains. Sprinkling over the user grants additional fire resistance. If I remember correctly, there are three items in the original game that do the exact same things, but with different names. Now, these are new items... But essentially, they do the same things, just with a new name. So. Now there's grains, I suppose, for this stuff. Oh, whoops. The more interesting stuff you get, you also get a uh, large hearthstone shard and moonlight shard. That's for upgrading weapons. A reaper scythe. Um, again, nothing interesting in the lore. But if you look, it's got an E and D attribute, attribute bonuses. And a ritual blade, which is D and E. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to upgrade to once you upgrade them. How well they're going to be for those bonuses. And for those of you who are new to Demon Souls or Souls, your attribute bonuses. You have all these stats you can level up, like an RPG. So you have strength, you have dexterity, you have your vitality, intelligence if you want to do magic, faith if you want to do other sorts of magic, etc. If you look at the bottom right, the attribute requirements, 13 and 13, the one on the left is for strength, 
the one next to it is for dexterity. In order to properly hold the weapon, you need to have those stats at that. The attribute bonus is the E and D. The higher that is, E to A and then S being the best, dash being the worst, the higher that is, the more points you have in that stat. So say there, the attribute bonus is D. If I have 30 points in dexterity, that D is going to give me an extra bonus to its attack power. And if it's an A, it's going to give me an even bigger bonus to its attack power based on if I have 30 dexterity. So that attribute bonus becomes really crucial to having better upgraded weapons. We got a hoplite shield. Um, but it's pretty heavy, so I'm sticking to what I have. Its weight is 8. And a red knight helmet, which is pretty damn cool looking. I actually don't know which weighs more. It weighs slightly less than the, uh, than the fluted armor, so maybe I'll switch to that at some point if you guys want. Once I can, like, equip a helmet again. Uh, the Boletarian Royal, or uh, Boletarian, yeah, Royal Clothes. And the Red Knight. So we get a full Red Knight set. Again, just to show you guys nothing interesting with the lore. The Curious the cure of the Boletarian Knights is emblazoned with the image of the sun as proof of their commission from this king, the king. Oh, I guess that is a little interesting. And it uses stone fangs, hard and iron. It is heavier and stronger than a regular Curious. Boletarian Royalty Clothes. Official robes of the Boletarian Royal Family. That's it. Uh, that's, that's all these things really tell us. Uh, oh, and we got the Ring of Long Longevity, which I'm going to take out, actually. So the Ring of Longevity, uh, legendary ring with engraving of a flowing river, increases max HP. Once given only to the bravest warriors, the ring would ensure their safe travels back home. Best assured. Your goods are safe. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and equip that ring. Get a little slightly more max HP. Mm, you knew here. Are you here for my services? The name's Baldwin. I'm just an ordinary blacksmith. It's simple. Just bring me all the souls you can. In trade, I'll give you weapons. Or forge the ones you already have. With your souls, I can eke out a living. And with my weapons, you can go on living. Not a bad deal, eh? No. Fine by me. If you haven't heard, there's another blacksmith at the entrance to Stone Fang Mine. He's an eccentric old man. He knows his trade well. He's the only sane one left in a town of soul starved men. If you do meet him. No, forget it. That stubborn old Nero will we'll just chase you off. There aren't enough smithing tools in this temple to handle all the work. Only certain ores can be used to forge weapons, but you'll just have to make do. And be thankful that I can do anything for you at all in this forsaken place. And be thankful that I can do anything. Uh, essentially, the idea is that you play Demon Souls online, and all these different characters, just like you, have been drawn into the fissure and are also trying to destroy the demons, which is why you fight each other and your world tendency changes and all that. Um, yeah, so that's why he's basically the blacksmith for all of them, which is why he's talking about that. The lore, I think, is more makes sense in the sense of like if everybody, the whole online community is all playing the game at once, that's where it comes from. Uh, so he can upgrade your weapons. I could upgrade my longsword right now, which I think I'll do, actually, because that's what I'm using. Uh, doesn't really change my attribute bonuses too much, but that's okay. Uh, right now, let's see, it's at 80 plus 6 for his physical attack, and this will make it 88 plus 10. So it actually does help boost up those attribute bonuses quite a bit. So, all right, now I have a longsword plus 1. Thanks to those hardstone shards I found uh, at the Dragon God, and the souls I got for beating the Vanguard Demon, you can't level up yet. You can't level up until you uh, beat one dash one. So, don't matter yet. So, I think that's gonna wrap up this episode of the Let's Play as we stare at this awesome statue that's upside down. Uh, I think that's all I had. Oh, there was one more lore thing I wanted to look at that I almost forgot about. Sorry about that. So, speaking of this guy. Our blacksmith Boltwin. 
Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at something interesting with him, which is that if you look at his left arm, you can see scales at the bottom left of it. And he comes from Stonefang, and that's going to be relevant when we start going to Stonefang. Or, sorry, his right arm. His left arm has a gauntlet on, uh, but his right arm has those scales creeping up there. So a nice and interesting detail. And it's uh, some of these character models have cool details if you look for them like that, which add a little bit more to their story. So, yeah, there's, like I said, there's not really much lore in the item descriptions in Demon's Souls, but a lot in the dialogue and even looking at the characters. So that's going to wrap up the first Let's Play of Demon's Souls. K -k 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 Kikita edition. Thank you guys so much for joining. I have been having an absolute blast coming back to Boletaria, especially since I haven't played this game since 2012. And I only played it once. And I, I'm i in heaven playing like another Souls game, essentially, because it, it's like I, I didn't really experience this game as much as the others. So it's really fun for me to delve deep into this one. I hope you guys are having just as much fun. And... Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know your lore thoughts in the comments. And let's have a discussion about things. And I'm so excited to be back in Souls mode with all you guys. So see you guys next time. Later, guys. Peace.